Okay, welcome back again. We're going to round things up with our last segment for the full moon sessions. And that is to look at what we're calling fresh kills. We've spoken about what's been out there for July um, in the month that's gone. But what lies ahead? What is tantalizing our taste buds and our visual senses are igniting uh, on the horizon in the world of horror? Well, first thing we're going to kick off with is the voyage of the Demeter um which uh out here in australia it's called dracula voyage of the demeter it's got other names on the northern hemisphere all around the same idea though it's taken the one chapter one chapter from bram stoker's dracula um which is on board of the dreaded demeter ship where dracula is tra traveling from transylvania over to london and and the occupants all die one by one throughout it um and this is a really quite a cool premise i feel i feel like taking this one chapter and then expanding that outwards um into a feature length has promise um it was always one chapter that stood out when i read the book as well i felt like it was a very strong chapter um i didn't realize it was just one chapter until i was reading about this film coming out it feels like it was it's several but it's such a it's all told from the captain's point of view as well if you've anyone's ever read the book so i feel like there is definitely avenue there for this to be a really really cool film uh what have you caught anything of this at all nick have you caught the trailer at all or have you got any thoughts on it yeah, yeah, I'm actually really excited for this one. For a film that's kind of um, a little bit under the radar, um, I think there's got a lot of potential there because it's got an interesting cast. Like it's got um, Liam Cunningham, Cunningham from, um, yes, from Game of Thrones, right. who's always, always yes, great. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I've, I've read Dracula as well um, and really enjoyed it. I felt like Dracula sort of dragged towards the end a bit. Um, but, yeah, the chapter, that kind of stands out for me and also from um, the... Um, Shit, sorry, Francis Ford Coppola film. <laughs> Francis, I was I was kept on to say um, Martin Scorsese. Yeah, <laughs> sorry, same same, um, same school yes. of film. <laughs> that always that always stood out to me because it was quite a sort of dramatic scene on the boats and the waves washing you know all over the place and him having to be buried in the soil and all that sort of stuff. So really interesting. I'm, my only concern is that they'll they might take some liberties too far with the characters and just yeah. try and make it like a love story and you know have something in there that's probably i mean they probably need something like that to make yeah. it interesting because like you say it's based on one chapter on one journey really yes. they've got to throw in some extra stuff i'm just i just hope it kind of fits the seat fits the theme and the mood and it's not just sort of thrown in for just padding it out yeah um and i'm interested to where to see how they take the sort of dracula angle and what happens you know, when the problem is when you're in such a small space like that, you know, what, what, where's their room to go? And, and because Dracula is, as my kids would say, is so overpowered, um, yes. you know, it kind of doesn't really leave them with too many places to run and hide. Um, although there's plenty of woods. So if you want to grab a steak, I'm sure there's something, you, could, you know, <laughs> it, doesn't do matter there, but... it doesn't matter if the ship sinks. Yeah. As long as we, no, that's it. We, we, we print the important. darkness in the process. <laughs> that's it. Yeah. Can Dracula swim? No. Um, yeah, that's a good point. If he, if if all the dirt that he hides in in the box, if that gets all washed away, what happens then? Or if you've got a priest on board, can let him get him to bless the water yeah. around the boat, and then and yeah, then done, 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 bless the ocean. Done. Yeah, bless yeah. the ocean. <laughs> um, yeah, look, I, I equally of the same kind of mind. I there are elements of the trailer where I kind of worry a little bit about um, uh, the possible direction it could go in and it, to expand that but i say that but i'm still quite keen to see it all the mm. same so that hits australian cinemas uh, i think in on august the 10th so go check that out and let us know your thoughts when it comes around before we get to that one though there's another sea faring horror venture that's going to hit the australian cinemas i uh, pretty much think it's next week from memory and that's meg Two, the trench yes that's right jason statham's <laughs> back to kick ass with all the megalodons that are coming out from the trench below the ocean's crust um this is going to be massively uh again talking about earlier when we were talking about um 
Russell Crowe chewing chewing up the scenery. Jason uh, Statham's certainly going to do this this here again here. What really intrigues me about this one because the first film was pretty yeah, um, but Ben Wheatley's behind it directing this one, and that actually gets me buzzing. Yeah, I think that guy's really good. Um, so I'd be really interested to He's see amazing. where they're going with that. What What are your thoughts on this coming up, Nick? Yeah, with with the Ben Wheatley thing, I, I'm excited by him too. I think he's an amazing director. Um, I wasn't a massive fan of um, the what was it Free Fire. Um, I yeah, thought that, you know, I like the premise of it, but yeah. you know, didn't really sit for me. Um, yeah, I think he's incredible. I'm not sure how they're going to really use his talent and what he's good at in a film yeah. like this. I feel like a film like this, they usually just get someone who's probably their first film half the time, and they just point the camera and let it and have a bit of fun but um yeah. i'd be yeah i'd really be keen to see what he what he's going to do with it because i tried to avoid the trailer because i want there to be something left in the film because obviously trailers spoil everything at the moment <laughs> yes. but um i i missed uh, mission impossible when i was away so i took the kids to see that on the weekend and oh, yeah. you know having a movie block myself i'm not used to actually paying for films but because it's mission impossible of course happy to that. do it yeah and, yeah um, yeah, and, and we were there early enough to see the trailers, and they had the trailer for the Meg, Meg Two, sorry, and um, yeah, I, I watched it. And I was just like, oh my god, it's so daft because I feel like they they kind of take everything into account that the audience would have a problem with. It's like, oh, we've got this glass that's Meg proof. Oh, we've got this this suit <laughs> that gives us super superpowers and super strength and things. So, uh, I feel like it's gonna be very on the nose, um, but also I'm actually really excited to see it because. I'm kind of ready for that sort of dumb popcorn movie. Yeah. Take the kids along, and, and that's exactly what it was. The original, brain. the original one was that too. Like it was dumb popcorn. You know, I remember going to mm. see that with Ant actually and a few friends um, over here in uh, Sydney. And um, yeah, I, it, it's exactly what it says on the tin. It, and what intrigues me again, I already said this, but how Ben Wheatley will take that kind of idea mm. and what his vision will. F- fold into that it'll be interesting it'll be really interesting to see okay um the next one i'm going to quickly talk about um is a movie that's coming out um in the cinema around mid august time and that's a film that is called um how to blow up a pipeline um i mentioned that because uh what intrigues me more about this film is uh, yes it's a it's a an environmental like action thriller um but it's directed by daniel Godha- goldhaber who who did that um netflix feature called cam i don't know if you caught that at all um which is kind of like looking at social influences uh influences and, and you can never really trust who you're seeing on the screen which i know is a bit passe now but he did it in a very smart and quite scary way um and this is his next venture um and the like basically the premise of it is that um you know we have a a group of uh different i think there's like six or seven uh, somebody i'm actually mentioned that it's a bit like uh the hateful eight where there's like a seven or eight people that kind of team up together essentially and their task is to uh blow up this pipeline in um uh west texas um as a bit of a a finger up against the the powers that be um but it's can i just like sorry really can Paul, interesting yeah yeah go for can it i just stop so i can just stop you there and read the synopsis for, yeah, go so for a it. film that's called how to blow how to blow up a pipeline the synopsis is a crew of environmental activists plot a daring plan to disrupt an oil pipeline so it pretty much explains the title and yeah. that's kind of it <laughs> yeah, so yeah. I'm not sure, you know, as as this is obviously a horror podcast, does I, yeah. I'm assuming there's more to it than that. There might be, I don't know, zombie yeah, remix or there's what's there's got to be something else. To I know surely. there's I know this is a horror thing, but I feel like this probably would sit more in thriller um, than yeah. horror. But I'm I mention it purely as I said because of the director who did Cam, and that was that was like a horror feature. But it it I found like it was quite a fresh take, and I feel like in his eyes you you and it feels like it could be um a really quite interesting journey into um social activism um 
And I think there might be a lot to be said with that one. So I mentioned it purely on that basis alone. So I say it looks like a, a cool feature anyway, coming out. Um, and released at yeah. the same time in cinemas out here on uh, 17th of August um, is a film called Sanctuary. Um, this stars um, Margaret Qualley and Christopher Abbott, who um, lead uh, what is essentially a cat and mouse thriller again, another thriller, um, set in a claustrophobic hotel room where the heir to a hotel empire and the dominatrix who has primed him for success become locked in a battle of wits and wills as he tries to end his relationship with her. Um, this sounds quite interesting as well, as I said, cat and mouse kind of uh, male, female power um, dynamic, pendulum swinging um, approach to it. So it could be like a quite a nice uh, buzz. I really like Christopher Abbott too, um, who's in this. Like he's been in quite a few things. Most notably for me, he was in the film Possessor, which I absolutely adored. Um, and I feel like this one could be uh, one of those cool little features that slips under the radar a bit. So keep an eye out for that one. Um, now we're going to go a bit kind of uh, family friendly horror because rounding out the end of August is Haunted Mansion. Now, this wasn't done that long ago. I feel like it was based. It's based on the you know the um, the theme park ride in uh, Disney, um, and as I said, not long long ago, Eddie Murphy did a, did a version of this film, um, but they're trying to reboot it again for for the for this next generation. Um, and the premise of it is basically a single mother and a son move into a mansion, um, and only to find that it's haunted, and they combat the spirits. Um, so they have to hire a former paranormal investigator turned tour guide, a priest, a psychic and a college history professor in order to try and rid the mansion of the specters that locate within. Um, this could be potentially go either way um, as a feature. It is Disney. So it, <laughs> yep. it, it, it is in safe, safe ish hands, um, but it is aimed at the, uh, the younger market. So, um don't expect any kind of uh big scares in there um but it could be a good fun fun entertaining film for the family and it could if they handle it well it could be one of those movies that marks as a first venture for young younger kids into what is horror um on the screen so it'll be interesting to see and mark that one i don't know if you've caught much of this at all nick or have any thoughts on it but please let me know if you do yeah i was I was wondering how you're going to finish that sentence of like a, a family friendly horror. And I thought, yes. what the hell? What, what, how are you going to finish that sentence? But yeah, you're <laughs> right. I'd say Haunted yeah. Mansion. Um, the, the first one, you know, or the, the Eddie Murphy one was just obviously terrible. Yeah. Um, oh, and so bad. Yeah. Like I, I loved, you know, I went to Disney World as a kid and absolutely loved it. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. Me too. The, I just remember gonna... the mirrors, the one with the mirrors, you know, with the mirrors and stuff. Yes. That was, that was, that to me stood out. But yeah, yeah. Anyway, you were saying, yeah. That. No, no, the, the mirrors and also the ceiling when the ceiling started to rise. And, you know, as a little kid, I think it was yeah. like eight or so. And just I yes. still remember just the feeling of like, is the floor sinking or is the ceiling going up? Like still trying to get your head around it while it's all going. And you, you're in this like, you know, small room filled with people. And yep. it's it's quite a, yeah, it's it's a physical experience. It um, is. And so when you hear that Disney, Disney are making another movie about another ride, you wonder really what where they're going to go with it but i think they've got a they've got a good cast like Perrin wilson and especially jamie lee curtis you know she's been quite hyped for this one i think that'll be yes. fun yeah um and I, I think you know i've always got time for uh that sort of old-fashioned you know i know it's not a whodunit but i feel there's probably might be some mystery in there and yeah like i even uh even rewatched clue the other day oh, you um, that just film. yeah it's just because it's so yeah, much it's bad. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, I think that kind of genre is interesting. And like you say, if yeah. it is a bit of a, a gateway for other kids to start experiencing, you know, not necessarily gory horror, but just like that thriller kind of, yeah. that, that kind of excitement that you can get, you know, that'd be fun. But I'm worried, you know, if it's anything like the other Disney remakes that have been churned out recently, yeah. um, you know, I can't talk too badly about them because I just haven't even bothered watching half of them, like the Little Mermaid. I just, I didn't yeah, feel like I needed yeah. to give that my time. Yeah. Um, but uh yeah i my hopes aren't high but i'd love to be surprised from that one. yeah yeah likewise likewise it'll be interesting to see i, I will definitely check it out when it when it spins around 
anyway and i think just lastly on that note as well is like i think as it just touched on something you'd said about it the experience of the ride itself that's going to be quite that will always be really hard to capture on on screen uh, because it, it is you are going through the physical senses um on that ride so i think yeah it'd be interesting to see but i you know ever since pirates of the caribbean then they've always been trying to emulate that and all of their other rides right so mm. uh, wherever they can pull in source material they'll try it so yes yeah, be interesting to see how that ended up uh, okay the very very last thing we're going to look at or discuss is not long ago it was only like about 24 hours uh before this record um uh that nick and i are going through is the uh trailer for the latest exorcist film called the exorcist believer um is uh, hitting all the uh the streaming platforms that you can talk about or look up um at your own venture um and we mentioned this on uh the original exorcist um in our previous segment on uh the killer bu- uh yeah the killer buzz segment earlier on for full moon sessions uh, but we're now looking at what would be the next venture. Now, there have been various installments of The Exorcist. They had two sequels, and then there was the remake, uh, or like, sorry, The Exorcist, the beginning, and the other one that came after it that was kind of like meant to be afterwards. There was The Exorcist TV series that came out. So it's not like this is the first time we're going into this realm. Um, now the synopsis here says it's the uh, we have parents of demonic possessed girls desperate for help go in search for someone who has had similar experiences uh, enter Chris McNeil played by Ellen Burstein again coming back so this is very much like how Halloween was her casting um, a more elderly uh, central figure who has been iconic in the franchise um, so we had that as we said with Jamie Lee Curtis, and now we're seeing Ellen Burstyn doing something similar. The what ties these two these two films together that I'm talking about is the director David Gordon Green. Now that in itself makes me a little bit positive, but also worried because the Halloween 2000 and uh, what, what? Hold on, what what year was that? Twelve that the. Uh, the movie came out uh, or my Halloween. No, hold on. 2020, what? 21, 21 and 22. 2021 yeah, and 22. Yes. Yeah. So the original, ha- like the Halloween, not the Halloween. original, the, the Halloween that ha- came out in the most recent trilogy. The first installment of that was, was really good. I really enjoyed it. Hence why I think if he carves it out, well, David Gordon Green will have a really good feature film on his hands but what he did with the other two films is borderline criminal um so (laughs) it makes me make me really quite nervous mate (laughs) let's just quickly tap into that mate go on i want to hear more about the borderline criminal yeah yeah well okay look I, i i felt like the first one was the reason why i champion it is because it really taps into the impact that trauma has right that was its central core and trauma never goes away it it it, it sits with you and to explore that with an iconic character in laurie strode and jamie lee curtis's performance of that i thought jamie lee curtis in that film bared her soul and was really really fucking good in it um, and i and i enjoyed and i enjoyed it i thought it was a really really good venture back into Haddonfield um so my issue with the other two um that followed is that it became this macho revenge flick with you know uh Tommy uh Tommy whatever is uh I've forgotten, yeah. uh, forgotten the guy's character's name now uh played by Anthony what's his face um <laughs> uh, <coming laughs> back in. um and, and that whole kind of um you know uh how uh people get pumped up and fueled by rage to essentially uh, enact their own justice um yeah i just didn't sit it just didn't sit with me and i felt it was it it just wasn't as enjoyable feature um i thought it was just average basically uh, there were pockets i did like um but it just I kind of came out of it going that was a little underwhelming considering where they uh, launched with. 
and then we get that mm. absolute turd fest of a conclusion um with with the halloween ends um and and the whole kind of idea like michael myers was was sidelined by the other character in it and the idea that evil and i know that's something that was passed around and played with with halloween 4 um, but the, the idea of evil being passed on or being able to be passed on and that the shape is always meant to be exactly that it's evil personified right but nobody goes there to see some kind of uh, uh, kid being you know bullied and then forced to take directions it's the nature versus nurture thing right um, and yeah. playing around with that concept um, in something like it 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 wasn't a Halloween film. It was if, if it had Michael didn't have Michael Myers in it, and you just had that journey of a kid uh, going that way. You could buy that journey, right? Um, and yeah. maybe he idolizes like real life serial killers out there, and that's what propels him because he's like that gives him the notori- notori- not- oh, can never say that word notoriety to um, push forward um, in their warped belief of what society is. Um, you could buy that, but you're not, you're not playing there. You're playing in the realm of Halloween and Haddonfield and everything that comes with what Michael Myers is. So essentially what he did is he killed the franchise. There is no way back from that unless they try and resurrect it again. It had people saying <laughs> Rob Zombie's films were better than this shit. That, that's how bad that is, right? That's saying something. <laughs> that's a statement. That is it a statement. is, right? And, yeah. you, and you to go from something so held up. And for me, the problem is, I reckon, like, all the, like, um, excuse me, but I reckon there's bullshit around we always had a trilogy in mind. Um, sure, they had the idea of the very first one that came out, and that was a bold enterprise. And because it was such a commercial success, they're so going to go back up with that. And at the mm. time, you're going yeah i'd love that they're finally doing something with this character that's interesting not just michael myers but the uh remnants of what or or everything that is left behind in his wake um that's interesting um you know but it's just it just didn't they just didn't handle it well enough for it to be worthy um yeah just yeah. was disappointing it was a disappointing run so that's going back to the exorcist though that's why I, i'm kind of concerned i've saw the trailer i don't know if you've called it yet nick but saw the trailer and i was just like yeah okay <laughs> um what's what's the purpose of it though why what's what's the point of doing it so it's yeah so it's a sequel to the 1973 I, version yeah, a, a sequel in the sense that you are pulling uh chris mcneil back into it because she has had an experience with exorcisms with kids in the past that's mm. that's the line and thread that i can that i all i can see in there um I didn't see any um religious uh representation <laughs> um at all so i don't know whether they will be present or not i don't know because it seemed more uh touched on the fact that these two kids go off um into the woods and they disappear for three days and come back but they feel like they've been gone for just a few hours um yeah i don't know um i i don't think i'm that convinced yet how about you no me neither it'd have to be a, a pretty dry day to to give that one a crack and yeah and look if I, i'll let sort of everyone else do the hard work for me with that one <laughs> if i if they all come back and say oh it's the best horror film ever then i can might give it a go but you know with these whole prequels just maybe tell a different story like why does it need that connection is it important yeah. like you know i need a young priest and an old priest it's like <laughs> okay great um you know i just yeah uh, it's it just gets a bit frustrating. And I know we've grown up with sequels in our lives that we probably, or, you know, remakes in our lives that we didn't, when we were younger, didn't even know were yeah. remakes, but still loved them. And this is, yeah, like I say, a sequel, but I'm just not sure who it's really for. Is it for no, people who it's love an the original one, it? and yeah. want the story to continue or why? Yeah, I mean, it's still, it's, it's Blumhouse are behind it as well. So like, and, mm. and the thing was with Blumhouse, to their credit, are able to or the, what they've been 
quite good at doing is is uh pushing these uh horror tales to a new audience um and they and they market themselves in a really really good way i do feel like they are hit and miss with their feature films some 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 are really compelling and some not so much um so it'll be mm. interesting to see which one that this one sits in uh i think for me the hook if it's if it is like a, the sequel um that they're posing the hook will be whether the demon returns pazuzu um from the original film and that would be an interesting tie-in because that's what would then maybe it's the plan there for pazuzu to bring chris mcneil into the fold and that's the whole evil um uh scheme that's coming up with that might be quite interesting if that suddenly mm. was like that's who's all that's who's pulling the strings behind everything that might make it an interesting confrontation again but i don't know i'm not so sure about it and and like the idea of like two girls being the ones possessed that just feels like you know like the old trick of let's do the same but a little bit more um, let's do two shocks instead of one shot <laughs> exactly right that's what it feels like and i'm like mm, yeah. really so i don't know i'm i'm quite i'm quietly uh sitting on the fence with it i will happily be um uh pleased by uh or or persuaded by um the the end result but i don't know i i just i'm not so sure and i am a big fan of the original the exorcist too this is the thing like i I remember going to see that at the movies and um, William Freaking, Freaking was able to really capture something quite chilling on camera and he built up some really interesting mm. ca um, characters there as well. And uh, yeah, you could question his the way he went about um, uh, shooting the film and his choices that he made, but the end result speaks for itself. It's quite a compelling feature. Um so I don't know. It'd be interesting yeah. to see how they or where they go with it. Um, I'm quietly thinking it may just be a bit of a middle of the road adventure. But let us know your thoughts because, like I said, the trailer's only just dropped. So yeah. we're kind of keen to see hear what your take is. It out there. Um, before we bow out, Nick, uh, is there anything else that you know that's on the horizon that you want to mention? Otherwise, we will bid adieu to everyone out there and see them uh, when the next full moon rolls around. Uh, yeah, top of my head, nothing really jumps out too much, apart from talk to me, that we, you know, yeah. that's, that's on my list. Looking forward to that one. Absolutely. Let's bring that um, one back yeah. to the hold. It, yeah, it, it's, it's not, um, it just feels like something a bit fresh. Like, I know the necessarily the premise might not be um you know extremely something we never heard but, you know i'm sure we might have seen something like that before but i think it's the execution which i'm keen to see and yeah and how that goes so um yeah looking forward to that one but yeah, not, not much i mean look there's not much else generally that i'm massively excited about no. like, just horror stuff but um yeah you know nothing too big on the horizon coming up yet but uh yeah hopefully something will surprise me yeah, we'll hope so. We'll keep, we'll keep an eye out. And as always, um, those that are following us, just let us know what you're excited about, what you think might be on the horizon. Maybe it's not coming up in August. It might be something a bit further afield. Uh, maybe the fri uh, Five Night at Freddy's uh, uh, idea could tantalize you a little bit. We talked about in that last uh, episode as well of our first full moon sessions or anything else that's on the horizon let us know what you think might be the next big thing maybe it is going to be talked to me well that certainly is the buzz at the moment as nick quite quite rightly pointed out until then uh do stick around for when the next full moon rises um and until then i'm your host son Werte. i'd like to extend my thanks once again to nick from watch it one back from joining me pleasure mate pleasure and until then, remember when the next full moon is out, don't forget to wolf out. Mm -hmm.